Good morning, I'm Mr. Boscarini, and today we're going to see how to use Google Sheets to make a scatter plot. Now, as usual, uh, in order to access any application in the Google Suite for Education, first of all, you need to open up your browser. For instance, I open uh, Google Chrome and you need to access your Google account. You need to log into your Google account, which I have already done, as you can see from my profile picture up here. So once you've done that, you're ready to start. And as usual, you're going to click on the top right corner where it says Google Apps on this grid. Click on it. You have a lot of applications here, but the one you're interested in is Google Sheets. So let's click on it and let's see what happens. It will open your main page where you have your existing um, uh, sheets open, but what you're interested in is starting from scratch. So we'll click on blank. So now we have our blank spreadsheet where we can input our data, we can uh, manipulate this data, and we can make graphs. So, Today, we want to make a scatter plot. A scatter plot is a kind of graph where you're going to um, uh, compare how some data changes as a function of some other data. Usually, it's, um, we use this a lot in uh, science when we're going to compare um, uh, independent dependent variable so we change some variable and we want to see the effect on another variable so in today's example let's assume we were looking at what we call Hooke's law which is the um, relationship between the force applied on the spring and the stretching of that spring so we'll start in any cell remember you can click on any cell and I'm going to start here with writing weight and I'm going to write the units it's always a good idea to write what is the name of the variable and its units and next to it I'm going to write stretching and for instance let's assume I measured this in centimeters okay so in our example I've started with zero weight and then at every step I increase the weight applied on my spring by one newton, all the way to nine newtons. Okay, so we have our first set of data. So I was applying an increasing weight on this spring and then measure the stretching of the spring. So we start with zero. So at the beginning, this spring is that stretch. And then let's put some data that I've collected previously. So for instance, 2.5, 5.5, 8. 5, 11, 5, 5, 5, 23, 23.5, 23.5, and 26.5. Before we move to actually uh, making a graph, um, it is important that, uh, as you can see, this um, in this second column, uh, the program has decided automatically how many uh, decimal places uh, to use to represent your data. Now, it's always good practice to have all of your data, especially if it was collected in the same way with the same instrument, to have it represented with the same amount of decimals. Okay, so what I will do now, I will, uh, again, what I will do, I will left click. And drag remember this is what you do in order to select now I have select all of the data and as you can see here in the menu you have decrease decimal places or increase decimal places in this case I want to increase because this as you can see now makes the first zero represented with the same amount of decimals okay now remember this will not change the outcome of our graph okay so now we're ready to make our graph as is shown in a previous video what you need to do you click on for instance the top left um, cell and uh, with your left click and then you drag and now we have <coughs> selected all of our data and as I've shown you before you need now uh, there are many ways you can insert a chart but the best the easiest one 
is just to go on this icon that says insert chart. As I told you in a previous video, this program looks at your data and makes a guess at which is the best way to represent this data. Now, normally with, a, with data like this, the choice is for a line chart, which is a perfectly normal chart, but it's not what we want, okay? So again, we have to see how we can change the type of graph or chart, whatever you want to call it. And you do it from here, from a chart editor, which opens automatically on the setup tab. You'll also have the customize, we'll see that later. And here we have a drop down menu with all the possible uh, graphs. And right now you can already see that the second choice is the scatter chart, which is exactly what we wanted. So I will click on that and now you see the representation has changed. Instead of a line, we have some dots. Each of these dots represent one set of data. For instance, this first dot represents this pair of data. Uh, the fourth dot over here represents this one, and so on and so forth. Now, as I've shown you in a previous video, now you can really customize this graph as much as you want. First of all, if you click left click on the uh, graph area, you select it so you can drag it around, you can expand it in a proportional way, or you can stretch it in one way or another, depending when you're clicking. Okay. Um, having said that, we want to change some of the features of this graph and let's see how to do that. You've noticed that the, um, the, ed the chart editor has disappeared. How we can make it reappear? Once you select again your chart, you have to click here, left click on these three dots. And it says, edit the chart. Okay, let's do that. And again, we have the chart editor. We have, a, again, our setup. We're not interested in that right now. What we're going to do now is go and customize. And if you've seen the previous video about the bar chart, this is where you can really change almost everything about this thing. For instance, you can change um, the kind of color for the background, for instance. But of course, this will not make it very readable. So let's go back to um, actually no color at all. This will make it transparent, by the way or you can make it white, okay? Um, but let's look at the chart and axis title. Now, uh, by default, since I've selected these two cells where it says weight and stretching, uh, the program has automatically used those as labels for the axis. I'm pretty happy about that. But let's imagine we want to change this into another one. Instead of calling it way, we call it, want to call it load. And the magic here is that if everything goes right, this should change. No, it didn't. So what we have to do now, we need to edit the chart, go to customize, and now we're going to change the axis title for the horizontal axis. So we go here, we select horizontal axis title and you see it still says weight i'm not happy with that i'm going to call it load and now you see it has automatically changed by the way you could have also have changed it by clicking here you see it's highlighted and if i double click again i can change it and this time i will rewrite weight the nice thing is that in the meantime, this has also changed. So these two things talk to each other. Okay, let's try to change something else. For instance, I'm not happy about the title. Again, I'm going here. You see, I'm still on the Customize tab, and I go on Chart Title, and this time I'm going to call it Hook's Law, I would, Hook's Law which is the physics law that talks about stretching of springs 
and the weight applied on that. Again, I can change it, can make it bold, I can make it italics, I can change the um, alignment, etc. I can change the color, okay? Many, many things you can change. But now I want really to look at something more interesting. When you're doing, um, when you're um, representing some data on a scatter plot like this one, and many, many times you see your data follows um, a pattern, a trend. And if you look at here, these dots are almost perfectly on a straight line. And many times you might be asked to add what we call a line of best fit. Now, Google Sheets call this a trend line. In order to add a trend line, you need to go, you're still on the Customize tab, but this time you go on Series. So let's click on that. And here, by the way, you can change the kind of uh, marks you have here for instance instead of having them blue I want to have them purple I can change the shape for instance I really love the, the star I can change the size but what is important here is that I can add a trend line so if I check this one you will see what we normally call a line of best fit. You can see it has automatically used the same colors every day. But again, you can change that. You see, you can change it here. You can also try to use a different kind of trend line. In this case, linear is what really best suits our needs. And again, I really encourage you once you have a set of data that is in this form to make your own graph and start playing around. Um, in following videos, we're going to see how to make other type of graphs, but for today, that's all from Mr. Boscarini. Goodbye.